of the starter. Earth is on the body of the starter. That terminal there is permanently live by the main cable from the battery. That one there we don't undo when we're taking the starter off, we only undo it when we're uh, dismantling, which we will in a minute. And that, for when the solenoid is engaged, the current feeds through there, through here, to the starter motor and spins it. Uh, it should also pull the lever here to flick the starter pinion out into engagement. And what activates the solenoid is when current is applied to this terminal here. Well, now that seems to be all working. So I'll take it apart, check it over. If I don't find anything wrong, I'll pop it back in the car. That seems to be the thing that caused all the trouble. The scores in it. Judging by the curve, we're made by the end of the pinion here. And I assume it's stuck in there. And that is a dowel from the clutch. That's the number for the uh, Asda Tribute. 2 litre, 4 cylinder, 2002. So first we disconnect that, 12 mil. Then we undo these two Phillips head screws. Make sure we find the right size screwdriver for it. Okay, jam that against the post. Push down as hard as I can with this. It's still starting to come out. So I need a bigger one. Or possibly an impact driver. Those things tend to be in very tight. And it's easy to bugger the heads. Went and got a bigger one. And by pushing very hard, it eventually came. Why they use these Phillips heads instead of a proper bolt, I don't know. The thing with Phillips screws, crosshead screws, <coughs> is that it's advisable to use overkill right from the start, otherwise you mangle the screw head like that. So, I hope this is overkill. We'll see. I think a new screw was indicated. So now that just falls off and so does this. Spring inside there.
seems to be working. And that little plastic pip there engages with the plastic lever or the fork just there. Which pulls the pinion uh, into mesh. So now we'll take this cap off and see what we can see of the brushes. I think these two long bolts first. Oh yeah, okay. She comes. And then these two screws here, I think. Yeah. Those are also quite tight and will benefit from a bit of attention from the impact driver. Uh, that's what a little bit of violence will do. Just put fat screws. Hmm. With oversized threads, that's definitely oversized for the size of slot. I wonder if they were hard to get out. Okay, so this should now slide off. So we will see. Brushes. Yeah. I think we're due for new brushes. <coughs> Those should come in a hell of a long way more further than that. Just as well I looked. That all one side for now. I think we'll tug the armature out. I suppose it's supposed to be. It? Yes, just comes straight out. Got a nice blind gear the other end. The main resistance with just magnetic force. Okay, so there's the armature. The various windings. Ah, windings, permanent magnets from the look of it. Now, here, this is just a little rubber bun, it pulls out, and there's a little metal disc inside there which will flip off. There we are. You can see in the front there the gears, the planetary gears, 
because it is actually geared down from here to the starter pinion. Ah, and there is a ball bearing which should go in the bottom of here. <coughs> Thank you to for my Irish friend on YouTube for warning us about this. That goes right down the bottom there. Do not lose it. I think probably the end of that shaft there sits on it. Now brushes. But, okay. Here yeah, just pull, pulls out along with the lead here. Oh, that'll do with some cleaning up. And yes, those brushes. Those brushes don't have much life left in them. Now this piece of housing I think just taps out so we will see if a gentle tap will do it. Same this side. Yes. Don't want to ding it too much in the process. like that. And we have also unintentionally disassembled our three gears from the uh, drive. It was the planetary drive. <coughs> so we'll have to give those a good clean before we put them back. Right. That's our planetary drive. The, pin the armature pin in, in the middle drives the inside of these gears. They rotate between that and the fixed outer gear there, the annulus, and hence they drive their centers there, which drives the uh, starter pinion. Rubber gasket comes out. This comes out with it. Yeah, there we are. Note which way round the fork on that is. So I'm not going to take this apart any further than this. Probably the pinion will come off by removing that. If it needs replacing, this doesn't appear to. And there's a video that I'll link to um, in my description that uh, describes how to do it on a similar starter motor. Probably the same works for this. Now lubrication. The end of the motor shaft in there, that appears to have a little pad at the end for oil. And that is probably a porous brass bearing, so I'll stick some engine oil in there. Give it time to soak in. 
before I assemble the starter I'll clean off most of the surplus because you don't want that oil getting around on the brushes. Commutator. Uh, similarly for the end there, there's some sort of brass insert. I think it's been greased. I'll stick a bit of oil in now, grease it when I assemble the starter. Just engine oil. If there's time for it to soak into the porous brass, if that's what it is. Question whether this should be greased. Not too much since that could get on the flour wheel, but there appears to be some grease in there. Also, the wheels, the three little planet wheels, that's what they are, here yeah, definitely need greasy. So, and definitely need some grease in that there and there. We also need some grease in here for this lever to pivot on. Uh, and uh, obviously at the ends of this lever also just a general purpose grease will do I'm sure. It doesn't need to be extreme pressure or anything. Since plastic gears, you're not going to need EP grease for that, I don't think. So then this goes in with that, that way around. And these cutaways on each side of this have to line up with the securing bolt holes. Here and there. Like so. Yep. Now we put the little gears on. I'm going to put a dab of grease on each spindle there, each pinion. And a little bit of grease on the gear teeth as well. Into there for the bottom of the motor shaft, we put another dab of grease. And the all important ball for the uh, front end of the motor shaft just drops in. And uh, back it down. Then this 
gasket again lines up with those in the bottom there have to line up with these. Which means that pip must line up with that. There, I think. steel disc shiny side in because that's what that pivot rubs on like that and the rubber the rubber grommet what do you call it pops in there squeezes into place. Check that it's still working. It is. Right. Hmm. So then we pop the rotor in, making sure that ball bearing is still in place. Turns the pinion much geared down. And now the new brushes. The old brushes sat like that. I think. Just have to be pushed out so that will sit down nicely. It's very hard to push the brushes back while slipping it over the end of the commutator there. So I've just got a socket, it happens to be a three quarter socket. And I will squeeze the brushes back with the socket. I hope. And then I should be able to slip it over there a bit more easily. So now I managed to get a socket jammed through there under the brushes. And hopefully, if I do this right, I can push it down, sliding the brushes over the commutator. You will see. So then we have this, which hopefully fits over the whole thing. And hopefully bolts up.
make sure the spring is in there. Sunlight, it's in there. That draw spacer. Set some dab of grease on the end here. Just a bit. Dry. And it goes on with the extra terminal on the right hand side of the starter, nearest to the where the motor will be. that I made. I'll see if I can find a better one before I put it back on the motor. Right. And that just goes on. Yeah. And that should be that. That's where we find out if it all worked or not. That clicks in all right. Yeah, I guess so.